everyone, Molly Pope here of Molly Pope Art. This is a purple cone flower tutorial and uh, to begin painting this, uh, painting on paper, I have taped out an area that I would like to paint inside that so that it would have a nice white border when we were finished and I could remove the tape. So basically you're going to use four colors on this background. Um, the colors, and I'm using a two inch brush, the colors are hooker's green, burnt umber, light olive green, and yellow ochre. And you're just going to paint this wet into wet and sort of blend them all together while they're wet, leaving sort of distinct areas. I wanted this um, background to be, to have the appearance of sort of a soft focus background. Like if you were looking at a photograph, you could kind of see colors in the distance, but not really make out the shapes. So basically just a soft focus. So you're going to paint that background and let it dry down. And then you're going to draw your purple cone flowers on that background using a pencil. And you can see I've got the purple cone flowers drawn on. I drew um, three in total, two up towards the top of the paper um, because I wanted those to be in focus. And then there's a little smaller lower one um, to the left hand side of this painting. And I wanted it to be sort of pushed back into the background and sort of out of focus a little bit. So that one doesn't have quite as much detail. And you'll see as I start to paint that. So again, I've got my design drawn on a pencil over that variegated soft focus background. And the petals for your purple cone flower at this stage that I painted them, they're sort of, um, they fall down and away from the center of that purple cone flower. Um, and to begin basing your petals, uh, I wanted to use a darker color to begin. And that darker color mix is a magenta color and mixed with a little bit of red. So again, I wanted those to appear to be a little bit deeper. Um, and this is a really simplified way to paint these um, purple coneflower petals. They're sort of basic. Um, and so I've used the <clears throat> magenta color mixed with red, and then I've gone back in and used, um, white mixed in with the magenta for sort of a mid range color on those petals. You can see I left that dark color showing through, um, that base coat kind of showing through where I am now applying that lighter pink color. Um, and you can see I'm painting it in very specific areas so that you can still see that dark color showing through those petals.
And you can see how I split up the flower into these, this multi-petaled um, flower. You can see how I split it up into three different kind of sections for the petals. I started all the way on the right and painted those five petals, then moved to the left. And now I'm working on the petals that are in the very center. So um, this is kind of how you split up and break up your multi-petaled uh, flowers that you're painting. It seems overwhelming a lot of times when you're painting um, flowers that have a lot of petals, but just kind of um, think think of it in terms of you are working a puzzle. So you wouldn't so so as not to overwhelm yourself. Just kind of break up your subject that you're painting into little pieces and parts and tackle it that way just by doing a few of the petals at a time. So again, I'm now going back and adding that lighter mix of the magenta mixed with the white to get a really nice brighter pink color, which this purple cone flower is actually, um, they're called purple cone flowers, but they're really like a bright sort of hot pink color. Um, this version is anyway, this is kind of the traditional purple cone flower. So I just want that sort of that bright pink to sort of highlight certain parts of the petals. And you can see these two petals that I'm working on overlap each other. So there's one petal that passes uh, underneath and the other petal that's on the top, which is I'm adding that bright pink to now. So just to add a little bit of interest to your painting, sort of vary the shapes and directions that your petals are growing. Um, and it'll give you a lot more realistic effect if you have some variances in your shapes. When you're painting anything natural, nothing is perfect in nature. I've said this before, and it bears repeating because it's so important. Nothing is an exact carbon copy of the other. So have a little bit of variances in your shapes and the directions that your petals are facing. Now, where this overlap is on these petals, I wanted to sort of enhance that and separate those petals a little bit more. So I'm adding that darker color back in where those petals overlap. Now, to begin painting that flower that's sort of underneath um, the flower that's on the top, you're going to use the same process. But what I did, um, because I wanted this, that flower that I'm painting right now, the second one, I wanted it to appear to be a little bit more in shadow. You'll see that um, I use a little bit darker mix of that magenta and you can mix a little bit more permanent red with that. You can even mix a little bit of burnt umber into that to get sort of a more shaded, um, muted petal color for that um, flower that's sort of underneath the main flower, just so it doesn't have quite as much detail. So again, using that darker mix first and laying down the color, and then you're gonna repeat the process the same as what you did on that top uh, flower, but use a little bit less um, brighter colors, a little bit more dulled down so that it appears to be underneath that top flower um, and a little bit just more muted. So the main focus that you want, this is how you draw people's eyes to something in your painting is you have one area or one flower that has a lot more detail and the secondary flowers have um, less detail and more muted colors. That's where you can really kind of draw people's eyes and their attention to the flower that has more detail. So again, now that darker color is laid down, the base color, and I'm just going to hit those um, petals with uh, a little bit more of a highlight color. And again, it's not quite as bright as the flower that's on the top. You can have a little bit more highlight on the left-hand side as so as to show 
that our light source is coming from the upper left hand side. So as you move um, from the left hand side of the flower, you want to have brighter highlights. And then as you are moving and painting to the right hand side of that flower, you can have less highlight and that will give um, people the idea when they look at your painting that you have a light source that's coming from um, either the left or the right. This Again, I wanted it to appear to be on the upper left-hand side, so my highlights are hitting that upper left-hand side. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions on any of this, I am happy to help you um, in your painting journey. So just ask the questions in the comment section for this video, and I would um, be ha more than happy to help you and answer those questions and help guide you on your painting process. Now this little third flower in this painting is again, that base color is even more darker in color. And I added more burnt umber to that mix, if you can tell that it's a lot darker um, than the previous two flowers. And I wanted it again to appear to be not so much in focus. Um, and the way to do that, to show that story in your paintings, um, to not have so much focus on it is to do darker colors, more muted colors, and uh, less detail. So it would not draw someone's eye as much as, you know, the, the flower that is in the upper right hand corner, the top flower. And now I'm going back and adding a lot brighter uh, highlight to those petals. And the way that you do that is you're just going to add more white into that original mix, that middle color that was applied. Just add a little bit more white into that to brighten it up a little bit. And it's helpful to sort of let those areas dry down first before you try to add that brighter highlight of um, the whiter color. Um, and the reason for that, you're just going to fight yourself. You're going to get frustrated. You're not going to get the results that you like, and you're just going to get frustrated with yourself. So I always let those areas kind of dry down a little bit, and then you can go back in with um, a fresh paint, a brighter, lighter color, and add those highlights into those petals. And you can see I'm not completely covering up what I painted prior, just adding little bits of um, that brighter highlight in certain areas where the light would be hitting those petals. To begin painting the centers of your purple cone flowers, you're going to use the burnt umber and you want this burnt umber um, to be really, really dark. And so what you're going to do is you're going to add a little bit of red to that and you can even add a little bit of green to your burnt umber. So those kind of three colors will give you a really nice deep brown. So the front of the purple cone flower center, you want the... It's called the seed head because that's normally, if you leave those to uh, over winter, um, the birds love to come in in the winter and eat those seeds right out of that flower head. 
So it's also how the, the flowers will reseed themselves. So you want that center to be really deep and dark and to show that there's some dimension and some roundness to that. So that deep color gets in the very center of the purple cone flower and then it gets along the lower edge and up to the right and the left. So it shows a roundness to that center. So purple cone flowers go through many different stages as they're growing. So as the flower is maturing, that um, center tends to be a little bit more flat. And then as the purple cone flower, as it matures, the top gets to be sort of um, cone shaped. And that's where the name of that comes from. So this is this, these purple cone flowers are kind of sort of in the sort of in the middle of still growing and forming. So that's why you kind of see on my painting, those um, tops are a little bit less cone shaped. Um, and purple cone flowers are related to daisies. So that's kind of why they really resemble daisies. So this, I'm adding, I'm letting that brown sort of dry down a little bit. Um, and then I'm going in and base coating some of the stems. Um, well, I'm, I'm base coating the stems and I'm using sort of that deep brown color um, mixed with the hooker's green. So it's a really, really deep green brown color and um, just basing those stems using that color. Now, the fun part in painting these purple cone flowers are the middles. They have so much beautiful colors, so many beautiful colors and so much character in the middle. Um, you'll see anywhere from oranges, uh, yellows, a little bit of green, and you'll see some of the brown sort of showing through. So I really wanted these centers to be colorful um, like the real flower is when it's blooming. So I'm using um, a color that's called vermilion, which is a red orange. And if you don't have that color, you can sort of mix up that color with um, red and a yellow, and you can have it tinged more to the red side, and that will give you a really beautiful red orange color, which is the, re the um, vermilion. So that goes in the very middle. Um, of all of the flowers and again that lower flower in the left hand side gets less bright red it's a little bit more muted down so within that vermilion color I just added some burnt umber to sort of dull it down since I want that flower to appear to be sort of out of focus And now that that red-orange has dried down a little bit, 
the next colors that you're going to add around that center of the purple cone flower is you're going to mix a little bit of yellow ochre into that vermilion to get a light orange color so we want that top of that purple cone flower to appear to be light and bright and is as if the sun were hitting that um, center of the flower so we're working around in that sort of semicircular shape to sort of give the impression that that um, center is nice and round and has dimension so as you work towards the center of the flower, um, you know, right towards your center, you're going to have lighter and brighter colors and over in the upper left hand corner because that's where our light source is coming. So again, you're just going to work lighter and brighter in that area to give that purple cone flower center some shape and dimension. And as you get towards the bottom front of that purple cone flower center to get the bottom section that we painted the dark brown to make sure that we keep that sort of looking like it's sort of rounded but also then moving into more dark areas into more darkness and shadow you're going to just add a little bit more yellow to your burnt umber so it stays a little bit darker um, and keep it on the brown side so it ends up being sort of like a mocha color um, on the front part of your um, the bottom area of your purple cone flower and again I wanted this uh, lower um, the second flower to not have as much detail so the colors on that center are the same colors that were on the very top flower they're just more muted so they're not as bright and that's how you can kind of um, paint that purple cone flower to still be beautiful, but not have so much detail. So just more muted colors. And again, that third little flower down at the bottom, we don't want to have a lot of detail on that. So again, those colors are even more muted and uh, a lot more dulled down. And there's not as much detail on that little flower because I wanted it to not be one of the focused flowers and I wanted it to appear to be sort of out of focus. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is adding a little bit more of a red um, sort of the color that you started with um, laying the base coat down on those petals. I wanted those petals that are around the center of those flowers to appear even more recessed. So I went back to that original color that was um, the magenta mixed with the permanent red and sort of went uh, around those little petals at the very base so that they appear to be down into the center of the flower and be um, you just want to make a little bit more shadow lines 
um, down those areas again to make sure those petals look like they're coming down from the very bottom of that flower head is, is the idea of adding that shadow color in those areas. Now we get to start painting the last three little elements to this purple cone flower painting tutorial. Um, those are the three leaves that are at the very bottom. And to begin base coating those, um, I'm using a mixture of hooker's green and burnt umber. It's my absolute favorite mix to start painting my leaves with almost any um, botanical painting that I'm working on. I'll use that mix. I do not use um, paint colors that are straight out of the tube. They're very artificial looking and unnatural looking. And since I'm going for typically a, a realistic look to my paintings, um, I always use mixes for my um, anything I'm painting, honestly. So um, that uh, mix of burnt umber and the hooker's green makes a really beautiful sort of dark olive green, which is a lot more natural um, leaf color or stems, um, whatever I'm using. And then the next color mix that I'm using is um, the light um, olive green mixed in with the hooker's green. That's sort of my mid-range color for my leaves. Now, one thing you want to be very careful of is you don't paint over that base coat color um, completely. You leave some of that dark border, especially on this variegated background, which is almost the same color as the leaves. You want to make sure you leave that dark background a thin border. And then you're just going to gradually build up highlight colors for your leaves using that light olive green mixed with white. Um, and again, you may need to let that your leaf dry down a little bit to get that beautiful bright highlight and to create those little sections that you see in purple coneflower leaves. So this tutorial is just about finished. I really hope you enjoy watching this. Um, if you have any questions, um, please drop them in the comment section. I am so happy to help you learn how to paint. And just let me know if you have any questions. Um, the last little thing that gets added to this painting, you don't necessarily have to add it, um, but I felt like the background needed a little bit more interest so I just used a watered down version of the greens, especially the light olive green, and just sort of added some sort of grassy looking leaves, um, again, just for some interest at the very bottom of the painting. You don't absolutely have to add them. It's completely up to you. So again, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I really appreciate you spending your time watching my videos. There's so much out there on YouTube that you can watch. So if you're watching any part of this, thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.
Thank you.